We've discussed several alternative methods of construction on this channel, like ICF or insulated concrete forms, earth bag homes, shipping containers, and more recently, earth ships. In this video, we're going to cover another alternative method of construction that is a very popular request in the comments, building with straw bales. My first impression was that they seemed to be a very archaic, flimsy, and quirky way of building. However, I was surprised to learn that they have a lot of advantages over traditional construction. Straw bales are a resilient and sustainable building product that can help us build better. So let's discover how straw bale homes are made, their advantages and disadvantages. Straw is a waste byproduct of the agriculture industry. After cereal grains like wheat, oats, rice and barley are harvested, the dry stalks of the plant are left behind. These stalks are cut close to the ground and gathered into a baling machine that compacts and ties them into straw bales. Straw is used as litter and fodder for cattle, baskets, furniture and even paper. It has also been used for thousands of years as a building material for reinforcing clay or mud structures and for thatched roofs. Straw bale construction is being rediscovered because of modern day construction challenges like the rising cost of building materials and the search for sustainable, low carbon building products. There are two main ways to build a straw bale house, load bearing and non-load bearing. A load bearing house uses straw bales as the primary structural support. The roof sits directly on compacted bales. This method works better in mild climates. A non-load bearing straw bale house uses another material like wood for its primary support. Straw bales are used in between the studs or as a continuous wall. This method works better in unpredictable climates. The construction of a straw bale home is fairly easy and straightforward. It starts with a concrete foundation and wood sill plates. The bales need to be raised several inches off the ground so that they don't soak up moisture from the ground. This is accomplished with platforms made of lumber and gravel attached to the concrete foundation. Straw bales are placed on the platform and wedged between the sill plates. They are stacked in running bond courses to form the walls of the house. They can be anchored together with wood, bamboo or rebar stakes so that they don't fall over during construction. Once complete, the walls can be secured with a wire mesh. A moisture barrier is then applied to the surface of the walls. This can be made of plaster, stucco, cement or clay. The final plaster layer is very important because it serves multiple purposes. It acts like a water barrier, an air barrier and a vapour control layer. Areas that receive a lot of rain should consider using rain screen sidings like wood, brick or stone over the straw bales. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, straw bale construction has a lot of advantages. The first is that straw is easily available in most parts of the world. The materials for plaster, like clay, sand and mortar, can be found at building supply stores. Straw bale construction is also fairly cheap compared to other, more engineered building products and insulation materials. However, you must factor in the cost of plaster, framing systems, lumber and mesh. Straw bale walls perform very well if they are designed and detailed properly. They can be good insulators with an average R value of 2 per inch. So an 18 inch thick wall has an R value of 30 to 35. That number is lower than synthetic insulation like spray foam or mineral wool, but continuous straw bale walls have the added benefit of little to no thermal bridging. I'll link my video on that topic over here. They can also reduce sound transmission and they are earthquake and wind resistant. They are flexible enough to resist collapse during an earthquake and heavy and dense enough to stand up to high winds. The next advantage definitely surprised me. Straw bales have three times the fire resistance of traditional walls. That's right, dried straw walls covered with plaster or stucco are naturally fire retardant. Since the bales are tightly packed, there isn't enough airflow to sustain a fire, so they are an excellent choice in areas prone to wildfires. A test conducted by the National Research Council of Canada showed that a straw bale home can withstand temperatures of 1850 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours before cracking. Straw bale homes also have good indoor air quality. Vapor permeable finishes like lime plaster allow moisture to pass through the wall rather than condense on surfaces. The construction materials are inert and non-toxic provided you use natural plasters, 
paint and straw that is free of fertilizers and insecticides. It also has numerous environmental benefits like low embodied energy, about half that of a traditional home. Growing, harvesting and processing straw requires much less energy than lumber. Straw is also a rapidly renewable resource and a waste product. Every year, approximately 200 million tons of straw are burned in the US, which could instead be used as a building material. Finally, straw is biodegradable. At the end of their life, straw and natural plaster can be ploughed back into the soil to decompose naturally. The manual labour required to build these houses was something I was concerned about until I discovered prefabricated straw bale panels. Eco Cocoon makes panels with compressed straw sandwiched in a wooden frame. The panels are made in a factory, transported to job sites and lifted in place with cranes or forklifts. The panels can support floors and roofs with no extra structural materials. They are usually used with an airtight but vapor-open membrane and a continuous wood fiberboard. The finished panel can withstand over 120 minutes of fire. Apart from the thick walls, you'd never be able to tell how the house was built. This product just keeps getting better and better. The last advantage I came across is its durability and long lifespan. One of the oldest straw bale homes is a 100-year-old structure in Nebraska. It has endured harsh winters with little to no rot. More recent examples of straw bale homes can be found in California. Designed by Arkin Tilt Architects, these homes survived recent wildfires with barely any damage. We cannot discuss straw bale homes without mentioning Chris Magwood, author of several books on the construction technique. His team has built dozens of straw bale buildings, like a food bank and thrift store, a sustainable living center, a museum, an environment center, and this gorgeous zero-energy house. But of course, like any building material, straw bales have some disadvantages. Before we discuss them, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of this portion of the video, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that allows you to interactively learn about science, math, and computer science. From algebra and gravitational physics to quantum computing and cryptocurrency, Brilliant has a wide range of courses for all ability and knowledge levels. I just started their course on solar energy, which covers various topics such as basic anatomy of solar radiation, the spectral properties of sunlight, and how solar panels work. Instead of just memorizing, Brilliant teaches to think about STEM through fun problems. Head to the link in the description to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 people will also get 20% off an annual membership. We've discussed how straw bale homes are built and their advantages. Now let's discuss their disadvantages. Straw bale homes are often marketed as a cheap method of construction. However, their low material cost is offset by high labor costs. Manually plastering walls can make the building just as expensive as conventional construction. Another disadvantage is the skill required to build straw bale walls. Stacking bales is pretty easy, but plastering them is tricky. It is a complex task involving mixing, applying, curing, and finishing of materials. If you plan on building a straw bale home yourself, you should consider attending a workshop or a hands-on experience. The high space requirement is another disadvantage. While a stick frame wall is six inches thick, a straw bale wall is around 18 inches thick. You will lose square footage because of the thickness of the bales. The permitting process can also be tricky. Many design and building codes don't allow straw bale homes or limit their construction. In California, for example, straw bale homes must include a minimum wall thickness of 13 inches and a one-story maximum, among other requirements. It may also be difficult to get funding because lenders consider straw bale homes as experimental or risky and refuse to finance them. Insurers may also decline coverage. Selling your home may also be difficult because people aren't familiar with the aesthetics and construction technique. The lack of studs can make hanging shelves, cabinets, and decor more complex than a regular home. Pests like rodents, insects, and beetles are also a concern in straw bale houses. Moisture is the Achilles heel of straw bale homes. Straw will decay and weaken if it becomes damp. Moisture can come in from cracks in the plaster, plumbing, windowsills, or joints that have not been properly sealed. Moreover, bales must remain completely dry during construction. In conclusion, straw bale systems are a surprisingly eco-friendly method of construction. They are more energy efficient, fire resistant, soundproof and durable, but they require care and maintenance. 
There is still a lot of experimentation going on with straw bale walls and every builder and designer has their own variation. I see a lot of value in prefabricated straw panels like the ones made by Eco Cocoon. They eliminate the cost of manual labor and pest concerns. When I started researching this building technique, I thought it was a crazy idea, but I've been converted. Be sure to check out my podcast with Chris Magwood to learn more about the Endeavor Center. Let me know if I should make more videos on alternative building techniques. I'll link my Patreon page in the description. If you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. I'll link all my sources in the description too and on my website. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. See ya.